And now for our dinosaur of the day, Utah Raptor, which many of you have requested. Thank you to Luke from Facebook, Tori from Facebook, and Dustin, who emailed us. We're happy we're finally able to talk about Utah Raptor and that we were able to speak with the paleontologist who named the species. So Utah Raptor means Utah's predator, or Utah thief, or Utah robber. It's from the Cretaceous period, and there's only one species. The species is Utah Raptor Ostrum mesorum, and is found in eastern Utah. It is the largest Dromaeosauridae, at least for now, which is the family it's in, also known as raptors. Other Dromaeosaurids include Velociraptor and Deinonychus. Utah Raptor, however, is a little different from Deinonychus. It's much larger, possibly two times or more the size. Actually, Utah Raptor's premaxilla is 250% larger. Before Utah Raptor, paleontologists thought that raptors were all small and lived only in the late Cretaceous. Most raptors lived towards the end of the Cretaceous, but Utah Raptor lived during the early Cretaceous, around 50 million years earlier. It's interesting in that these other raptors were much smaller, but they lived later, so since the trend is that dinosaurs tended to grow bigger with time. The Utah Raptor holotype consists of skull fragments, tibia claws, and some caudal or tail vertebrae. And the largest Utah Raptor is estimated to be 23 feet or 7 meters long and weigh around 1,100 pounds or 500 kilograms. It's about the same size as a polar bear. The type species was named by Dr. Jim Kirkland, as well as Drs. Gaston and Berg in 1993 for John Ostrom, a paleontologist from Yale University's Peabody Museum of Natural History, as well as Chris Mays, a dinosaur robotics pioneer from Dynamation International, and Dr. Kirkland was working at Dynamation International at the time, or around that time. John Ostrom theorized in the 1970s before it became widespread that raptors such as Deinonychus were ancestors of modern birds, which is partly why his name is part of the species name. The species was originally going to be named after Steven Spielberg, but as Dr. Jim Kirkland mentioned, it was changed at the last minute to avoid a potential lawsuit. Utah Raptor was formally described in 1993 shortly after Jurassic Park was released, in Jurassic Park, the velociraptor is half the size as in real life. The large size is actually more similar to Utah raptor size, though some people said it could be a combination of Deinonychus and Utah raptor. Although, again, Utah raptor wasn't described until after the movie came out. The first fossils of Utah raptors were actually found in the Brigham Young University's Dalton Well Quarry, which was discovered in the late 1960s by Lynn Ottinger and a few specimens were prepared out of hundreds that were collected by Jim Jensen and his crew in 1975. Bones from Dalton Well were well preserved, but they had a mix of many different individual dinosaurs. There was a second group of Utah raptor fossils, including a foot claw, found in 1991 and 1992 by Dr. Jim Kirkland during excavations of the Gaston Quarry. Another large carnosaur was found at the Dalton Well site in addition to Utah Raptor, but it's unclear how the two large theropods lived alongside each other. Also where Utah Raptor was found, but much more recent, in 2012, there was a new dromaeosaur discovered in the Cedar Mountain Formation. It's called Yurgovuchia dolingi, and it had a unique tail skeleton similar to Utah Raptor, which had a large flexible tail, and it's probably in the same clad as Utah Raptor, but it's about the size of a coyote compared to a polar bear. Utah Raptor was probably warm-blooded and an active predator. Several claws have been found. They have a sickle claw, as well as what are called manual claws, which tended to be very thin. These manual claws were specialized and scientists do not think it gave rise to other known dromaeosaurs. Instead, there may have been an older common dromaeosaur ancestor from the early Cretaceous or even the late Jurassic. The sickle claws were 9 inches long, and the nails were probably 15 inches. It had three fingers on each hand and four-toed feet, and Utah Raptor had enlarged toe joints so that its sickle claw could raise up and backwards so it wouldn't be injured while it was running, but it could flex its claw when attacking. Utah Raptor had blade-like manual claws, which again is different from Deinonychus and other smaller dromaeosaurs. They had long arms so they could hold their prey while attacking with their sickle claws, and it's possible that when they kicked their prey, the force would have thrown them off balance, but Utah was a lot heavier and probably wouldn't have been thrown off balance because of the force of its kick, so its hands were free to help kill the prey. It probably had very strong legs and, again, used the sickle claw to slash its prey. 
and based on Utah Raptor's size, it may have been able to make five to six feet long cuts with one slash by rotating its limbs and flexing its claw, so it probably could have killed its prey with one kick. It was bipedal and agile, and based on the length of the tibia, scientists think it was subequal in length to the femur, like in other large theropods. Scientists think the Utah Raptor was probably not as fast proportionally as Deinonychus or Velociraptor, would have been at least as fast as iguanodonts in the area though, and maybe faster than sauropods. Like other dromaeosaurs, it had a caudal vertebrae to stiffen its tail for balance, it had blade-like serrated teeth, one tooth was 45 millimeters or 1.7 inches long. The premaxillary teeth are different from other described dromaeosaurs, it had simple blunt serrations, except for dromaeosaurus, so Utah Raptor may be in the subfamily dromaeosaurine instead of the subfamily Velociraptorornae. Utah Raptor had large eyes and a curved, flexible neck. No feathers have been found, at least yet, with Utah Raptor specimens, but there's strong evidence that Dromaeosaurs had feathers, partly because Microraptor, one of the oldest known Dromaeosaurs, had feathers, as well as other Dromaeosaurs. Utah Raptor's feathers probably gave it an added lift, but the dinosaur wouldn't have flown. Utah Raptor was one of the most intelligent animals of its time in habitat, and it coexisted with nodosaurs, which were spiny and armored, iguanodons, and sauropods. Utah Raptor may have gone after iguanodonts or larger prey, like sauropods that were up to 65 feet or 20 meters long. This is because dromaeosaurs are sophisticated hunters and possibly could hunt prey bigger than themselves. So dromaeosaurs that were 11 and a half feet or 3.5 meters long and 70 kilograms or 150 pounds could probably successfully hunt prey that was 8 meters or 26 feet long and 1,000 to 2,000 kilograms or 2,200 to 4,400 pounds. Utah raptor may have hunted in groups, but this is not known for sure yet. Until 2014, only isolated specimens of Utah raptor had been found, but there's evidence that Deinonychus may have hunted in packs, so scientists think other dromaeosaurs, such as Utah raptor, may have hunted in packs too. Dr. Jim Kirkland talked about his 9-ton block of sandstone with the Utah raptors that they're currently trying to study, but just to quickly go over again, in 2014, that block was excavated. It took about 10 years to excavate. Dr. Kirkland heard about the site in 2001 when a geology student found what looked like a human arm bone, but it turned out to be part of a dinosaur foot, and it was a hollow bone, which meant it was a carnivore. There have been a bunch of Utah raptors found together in all different ages. The fossils are packed in tight, some are stacked three feet thick. So they may have died together or at different times in quicksand. Again, it's one of the things they hope to find out in the study. And again, as Dr. Jim Kirkland said, they're so well preserved, probably because whatever killed them also preserved them. The bones are in sandstone and red mudstone, and then the Cretaceous lake surrounded the area. And as the lakes drained, it would have turned the ground into quicksand. According to paleontologist Stephen Brousset from the University of Edinburgh, dromaeosaurs are some of the rarest dinosaurs in the North American fossil record, so this is a big find. Also in the area was an iguanodont, which the sense, one of the theories, is it may have attracted the Utah raptors to the site. Because of Jurassic Park, raptors are often depicted as pack hunters, but there's not much actual evidence for it. The best evidence is a trackway in China that appears to show a group of dromaeosaurs going after an iguanodontian. So this find may determine whether Utah raptor hunted in packs or not. One way to see is if the skeletons show interweaving or the degree the bones were damaged by sun and exposure before being buried shows if they're buried at the same time or at different times but this will take years to study fully, and also a lot of funding. You can see pictures at stgeorgeutah.com, and we'll post a link in our show notes so you can see what the 9-ton block looks like. Again, as Dr. Jim Kirkland said in his interview, Dr. Robert Bakker kind of suggested the name for the Utah Raptor genus. He, at the time, I believe, was consulting with the Jurassic Park crew, and he wrote a novel that was published in 1995 called Raptor Red, which is a novel about Utah raptors. It's told from the point of view of a Utah raptor called Raptor Red, using many of his theories about dinosaur behaviors, intelligence, and habitats, as well as based on studies of modern animals. It follows a year of Red's life, where she loses her mate, finds her sister, struggles to survive, and Bakker was inspired by Ernest Thompson Seton's works, which show life through the point of view of predators. His goal was to portray predators as more than just evil, and 
make people empathize with him more. It got mostly positive feedback, but some critics thought the public would think his theories on Utah raptors were fact instead of made up. Although, again, like Dr. Jim Kirkland pointed out in his interview, he uh, came up with some theories and 10 years later they found out that it was true. One reviewer compared Raptor Red to Pride and Prejudice, since Red Sister does not approve of Red's new mate. And interestingly, Daily Variety reported in 1996 that producer Robert Homme Sr. made deals with Jim Henson's Creature Shop to adapt Raptor Red, as well as Animal Farm, but there were no official projects announced, although that would be really awesome to see. Utah Raptor has been in the media a lot. In 1999, it was in BBC's Walking with Dinosaurs, but unfortunately, there were few inaccuracies, such as portraying Utah raptors living in Europe, and it's only been found in the U.S. Although, there are a lot of dinosaurs in North America that had similar-looking relatives in Europe and Asia during the Cretaceous because of the continental drift, Utah raptor's counterpart was Achillobator, a smaller version that lived in Central Asia and had extra thick Achilles tendons in its heels. If you want to see Utah Raptor, you can go to the Natural History Museum of Utah, Brigham Young University Museum of Paleontology, and Utah State University Eastern Prehistoric Museum. So just to quickly go over Utah Raptor's family, the dromaeosaurs, they're known as swift lizards. They had unique wrist joints that allowed hands to pivot sideways, similar to a bird folding its wing. And dromaeosaurs are evidence the dinosaurs were active and related to birds and probably warm-blooded. Dromaeosaurine is a subfamily of Dromaeosauridae, and another subfamily is Velociraptorine. Dromaeosaurines have stout, box-shaped skulls compared to other subfamilies of Dromaeosaurids that had narrow snouts, and Dromaeosaurines had thicker legs that were built for strength, not necessarily speed. Dromaeosaurines lived in the U.S. and Canada, Mongolia, and possibly Denmark and Ethiopia. Teeth have been found in Ethiopia and it may have been a dromaeosaurine from the late Jurassic. Again, late Cretaceous dromaeosaurines were small, about 1.8 meters or 6 feet long. 